Okay, so we've worked out our mid-zone weight, so now we'll go over a standard flight plan um, using the same information that we used previously to work up the, uh, the mid-zone weight. So the scenario or the question will be something like this. You are departing um, area A for destination B with um, C as an alternate. It's a day IFR flight. Um, the distance between a and B is 120 nautical miles, and the distance between B and C, or B and your alternate, is 40 miles. Uh, your track is 210 degrees magnetic for both legs. Your wind is 180 degrees magnetic, 25 knots for both legs, and you'll be cruising at 6,500 feet. So this is what I... Um, like to write down. Uh, was there any other information there? Oh, Q and H um, one zero zero two and ISA twelve. So I like to write out the information um, just so I have it easily accessible on my piece of paper rather than um, on the screen. So day I F R uh, Q and H one zero zero two. I say plus 12. Um, now we start drawing our plan. So this is the way I'd like to draw it out. We're going from A to B to C. We're climbing. Potentially there's a descent here, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention is that there is a requirement to do an IFR approach at B. Uh, so this distance here was 120 nautical miles, and this distance here was 40 nautical miles. Um, our altitude was 6,500 feet. Now the reason I write it way up there is because I'm going to work down to work out my DA based on this information here. Um, the other things that I like to write here are ground speed and fuel flow. Uh, now for some multi-legs that are at different, um, that have different winds, or different altitudes, uh, I would probably write the ground speed and the fuel flow for every leg, but we're assuming that from B to C is going to be the same from A to B, so it's the same track. Uh, and you could also write somewhere here, um, let's go track 210 degrees magnetic, uh, wind 180 zero degrees magnetic 25 knots uh, and we've already worked out the mid-zone weight so we'll write takeoff weight 1400 mid-zone weight was 10,000 from the previous video Okay, so now that we have this sort of template or this plan written out, um, one of the first things I like to do is just write in the climb right here uh, how many minutes this is going to be. So we've got 6,500 feet that we're climbing up to. Remember we round to the nearest 2,000, so that's going up to 8,000. Um, one minute per 2,000 feet, that means four minutes. So right here I'm going to write four minutes. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is fill out my ground speed and my fuel flow. So what are those going to be? So ground speed and fuel flow. Well, we need to spin our winds. All right, so right here, um, 
we've got our whiz wheel and so I've already marked it actually so you can see here our wind was 180 magnetic actually something to note about the wind um, I think I mentioned this in the last video but uh, make sure you know whether your wind is in magnetic or true they might give it to you in true in the form of a R4 or a forecast uh, a terminal forecast in which case you have to do the variation yourself so um, here's the wind still set up from the last video 25 knots at 180 um, 210 was our track and that gives us again 118 118 um, ground speed fuel flow and again from the last video we're going to go back to the table Uh, actually, sorry, we need to work out our DA. Um, so, 6,000 feet, Q&H. So, 1013 minus 1002 gives us a difference of 11. So it's minus 11 on the Q&H. And you know, some people struggle, you know, which way do you go with adding or subtracting? I just always try to think about it logically. Um, a lower pressure, so lower than 1013, we will find a lower pressure higher up. So it's worse for us. So it's going to add to our um, altitude. So um, Q and H difference, 1012 compared to 1013 as 11 times 30 feet is giving us 330 feet. And we're going to add that to our 6,500. So plus 30, 330 rather. Now temperature is ISA plus 12. So we're going to go 12 times 120 is giving us 4,000, sorry, 1,440 feet. And again, the, it's a higher temperature that's worse for us. We find that higher up. So we're, again, we're going to be adding that 1440 to our 6,500 feet. So if we go 6,500 plus 330 plus 1440, 8,270 feet. So our D a is 8270. Okay, now that we've got our mid zone weight and our DA, we can figure out our fuel flow. So we're going to come to our table. So anything that goes above 8,000 feet, you're going to assume 8,000 feet. There are, it, it doesn't go above um, a DA of 8,000. You don't have to interpolate above 8,000, you just stop at 8,000. So our maximum is going to be 8,000 at 10,000 pounds. So our fuel flow for this trip is going to be 488 pounds. So we're going to write 488 right there. Now we have the information that we need to start working out our um, fuel used on our flight plan. So there is a list of things that I try to remember, and, and this is one of the things that I write down right away when I'm doing these exercises, is um, I write a quick reference of all the things we're adding up in a flight plan. So that is going to be our climb fuel, our leg fuel, our alternate fuel. I'm going to leave a gap here because we're going to add those. Then it's going to be our variable fuel, our fixed reserve, any hold fuel, any approach fuel, and start slash taxi fuel. Okay, so we have three things here and five things here. And this is important to get the order right, or more particularly the grouping right. These three things have to go together to make sure that you get a correct variable fuel. You don't want to be adding your fixed fuel onto this before working out your variable fuel because that will give you an incorrect fuel. Okay, so let's look at our variable fuel for the climb. So we've got a fuel flow of 488 and a climb of 4 minutes. So easiest way to do that is to go 488 divided by 60 times 4 minutes. Gives us 
32.5, so we're going to round up to 33 pounds. Now our leg fuel from point A to point B is 120 nautical miles at 118 um, knots at 488 pounds per hour. So we're going to go distance first, 120 divided by 118 should be very close to an hour times 488, which means it should be very close to 488. So 496. And that makes sense because our distance, our distance is slightly more than our ground speed, so we would expect that the fuel used would be slightly more than the pounds per hour number. So 496.2. 496. Now we're going to use, uh, next we're going to get our um, alternate fuel. So from B to C is 40 nautical miles, so the same thing, 40 uh, divided by 118 times 488, 165.4, so 165. And again, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but you just use standard rounding for all of these numbers. Um, if it's 0.5 or higher, you go up. If it's lower than 0.5, you go down. Okay, now we're going to add these. 33 plus 496 plus 165 gives us 694. 694. So 694 pounds is the fuel that we need to climb, fly to point B, and then fly to point C. Now we need to start working out our reserves. So remember, for IFR, and again, this is um, I like to write little notes here. So we'll go 10%. This is an IFR flight, so or 10 minutes. The fixed reserve for IFR, let's have a look at this sheet again. Again, we just always want to reference this stuff. We don't want to try to remember it. So IFR, two engine, 30 minutes. We're going to write 30 minutes. Hold. Well, there's no mention of, a, of a, a hold in here, so nil. But there was mention of an approach, so we're going to write one. And um, we're looking for the startup fuel. So that's actually um, something else I'll talk about uh, towards the end. But we need to be very clear what they're asking for. Are they asking for startup fuel or asking for takeoff fuel? Uh, so they're asking for startup fuel in this one. So start and taxi is going to be included. So first thing we want to do is we want to find out whether 10% or 10 minutes is higher. So 694 times 0.1 to get 10%. That's 69.4 pounds. Okay, we'll remember that. Or 488 divided by 60 times 10 minutes. That's 81.3 pounds. So the 10 minutes is actually higher. So that's what we're going to use. So 81. That's pretty horrible. Eight. You'll have to put up with my messy handwriting. Um, fixed reserve. Fixed reserve is um, 488 divided by 60 times 30. 244. We have no hold, and we have one approach and one start. So let's look back at our sheets again. What do we have here? An instrument approach is 50 pounds, and a startup and taxi is 40 pounds. So an instrument approach, 50 pounds, start taxi, 40 pounds. Now we're going to add all of these together. 694 plus 81, plus 244, plus 50, plus 40, gives us 1,109 pounds. 1,109 pounds required at startup. Start up fuel. 
if they were to say, um, what is your takeoff fuel, which is pretty unlikely, but if they were to say, what is your takeoff fuel, uh, you would remove the start and the taxi. Um, one thing that's not mentioned in the training documentation, but it seems to get the correct answers is, here we're actually doing an approach, and if we go missed approach, then that's back up to another climb. But you never actually take the second climb into account back up to your you know, 6,000 feet. And I think what they're doing is they are accounting for your potential climb in your approach fuel. Um, but that's something that I'm unsure about. In the um, Australian documentation, they, they don't mention that at all. Um, and all of the correct answers um, do not take that second climb into account, which is odd. Uh, maybe that comes out of your um, the, the fact that your variable um, fuel is now changing because you're going to a, an alternate destination. But yeah, something to think about. Uh, all right, I hope that makes sense.